want to show you what we have done regarding this topic in Argentina. Um, this is the reason why Rodrigo couldn't make it. Uh, he's going to be a father very, very soon, uh, any moment. Um, so that's why I'm here uh, covering for, for him. Um, my name is Fernando Usema. I am the uh, executive director of the Catena Institute of Wine in Mendoza, Argentina. Uh, this institute is the research and development division of the Catena Zapata family, which is a, uh, one of the largest uh, producers in Argentina. Uh, before we start, I would like to do a quick survey. How many of you come from a wine region located between, let's say, sea level and 500 meters of, of altitude? 50% or more, maybe? What about 500 and 1,000 meters of elevation? Over 1,000? <laughs> That's me. Well, my, my friend Martin is also from, from, from Mendoza. So um, as you can see, most of the wine regions in the world are not that high. Um, and these high altitude regions might become quite important given climate change. So the focus of today's presentation is on high altitude Malbec. Uh, this study was conducted in the Uco Valley. For those of you who have not, uh, who are not, who have not been there, Uco Valley is here. Uh, at the foothill of the Andes Mountains in the province of Mendoza. And we have vineyards there planted between 900 and I would say 1,600 meters of altitude, so quite extreme. And also, as you can see in the picture, it's a high altitude desert. Almost three decades ago, the Catena family was looking for a place to grow high quality grapes. Their um, obsession was to make wines that could stand with the best of the world. And they were told that um, the traditional regions of Mendoza were too warm to make wines of uh, elegance and finesse. So they decided to look for the coldest place where viticulture was possible in Mendoza. And they uh, ended up plant and, uh, and they planted this vineyard, the Diana Vineyard, that is located at uh, almost a thousand meters, uh, a thousand five hundred meters of elevation. And as you can see, it really gets cold here. Um, to our surprise, varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon or even Malbec uh, would ripen without problem in this area. Moreover, they would produce uh, outstanding quality. And was, was temperature the main reason for this quality? We didn't know. After some workers of this vineyard started complaining about the intensity of the sunlight, uh, we considered that this factor could be explaining the unique characteristics of this site. And I think uh, Mark Shen maybe so, was here. I uh, was here. Uh, Mark was commenting that in his last trip to, to Mendoza, he got a lot of sunburn. He, he never thought that the sunlight would be that intense. So as you know, there is a, a visible part of the sunlight that plants uh, use for photosynthesis, so sugars and acids mostly. But we were interested in the UVV portion of the spectrum, as it has been shown that um, it affects the biosynthesis of antioxidants, like phenolic compounds. So in this chart, you can see that as we go higher, from, let's say, 500 meters of elevation to over 3,000 meters of elevation, the intensity of UVB goes up. But not so much under 1,000 meters of elevation. Um, the top curve corresponds to a touristic location in Mendoza. And in order to avoid getting trapped overnight there, you have to leave early because there is a lot of snow melting uh, water running down. But the orange curve, that's the one I want to focus on, is the Adriana Vineyard. So it's located at almost 1,500 meters of sea level. And you see significant higher uh, UVB light from sunrise to sunset. 
In a previous study of our group, we showed that as you go higher, phenolic compounds do the same. However, if you remove the UVV light from uh, the, the, the natural environment, I'm going to show you how we, how we did that, there is only a significant change at the maximum altitude, not in the other two. Since then, 2008, we have been studying um, how vines react to high altitude conditions. It seems that, well, you know, in Mendoza they cannot get sunblock easily. I wanted to cover the vines with sunblock. They didn't let me to do that. Um, so the, the other option is that they do it themselves. They somehow create these compounds to protect the, the seeds from, from the sunlight. And the mechanism they use, we believe, is a stress a stress response mechanism. And well, we know a lot about stress, no? putting together a congress, uh, traveling 30 hours to get here, um, not going to get, uh, go into the Brexit uh, thing in Europe, uh, but we know stress. Uh, so what, in our experiment, what we wanted to do is evaluate factors known to either cause stress or signal stress, such as water restriction or abscisic acid sprays and compare them to the effect of natural UVB light in a high altitude vineyard. So that's what we did. Uh, in this uh, Malbec vineyard, we, 15 days before flowering, we cover the vines with either a type of polyester that filters out the UVB or with polyethylene. Then, um, at duration, we started the irrigation treatments, one treatment with and one without uh, deficitary irrigation. And finally, we sprayed twice, at duration and 15 days after, with either water or a solution of abscisic acid. As a result, we obtained a factorial design with eight combined treatments. So, results. When we spray uh, abscisic acid, we saw no changes in low molecular weight phenolics. And it makes sense. We apply the abscisic acid, starting at duration, after most of these compounds are already being produced. Similar results were obtained with volatiles, so no major change. However, we did see an increase in anthocyanin content, which, as we know, are produced after brazen. Regarding water deficit irrigation, again, no changes observed with uh, the low molecular weight phenolics. Uh, the treatments were started at brazen, so it makes sense again. The same happened with anthocyanins, a slight decrease but not significant. However, we did see a decrease of volatiles with water deficit irrigation. And, and we're going to come back to this in a minute because as Keith mentioned, interactions are very, very important. Regarding the UVB treatments, uh, low molecular weight phenolics were significantly increased in wines uh, when the vines were exposed to the natural UVB condition. Uh, keep in mind that we started these this treatments at flowering, so we had enough time for uh, the two treatments to uh, separate regarding phenolics. But we didn't see significant differences in anthocyanin concentration and volatiles, even though we did see a slight decrease in volatiles. And I want to come back to this, to interaction. Um, in the case of volatiles, when we didn't have any water restriction, we can see that there is no significant difference um, without UVV and with UVV. But what happens when we do have uh, water stress? There is a big change. Huh? So there is a decrease under the natural UVV light. So when you arrive to a region that you don't know a lot or that there is not a lot of knowledge about, like high altitude viticulture, we need to be very careful in how we manage our stresses, how we manage our terroir. 
as the combined effect of natural stress like UVB stress and a practice like irrigation could potentially reduce the potential of your wine. However, as we all know, total concentration of these compounds are not as um, informative as individual and relative concentrations. In this case, we can see the baseline, that's 100% baseline. That is the situation um, without UVB and for low molecular weight phenolics. And in orange, you can see the profile of the wine in the natural UVB condition. So there is a big change. Maybe we didn't see a huge change regarding the total concentration, but when we analyze each individual compound, we can see that, for instance, quercetin increases considerably. And similar profile changes are observed for anthocyanins and volatiles, suggesting that the profile of these wines could be not only from a chemical point of view, but also from a sensory point of view, quite different. The definition of terroir in high altitude locations needs to, in our opinion, address the importance of sunlight intensity, particularly UVB light, as a stress promoting factor that affects grape, grape and also wine quality. Thank you very much.